My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Hi, I'm Siba Feely Rose Amador LeBeau, and I'm here with my co host Craig Pasqua, and we are Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Well, we have a very exciting show today. We do, Rose. Today, we have a, a legend in our time with us on the set. We have the 1964 Olympic gold medal in the 10,000 meter Olympics in Tokyo, Billy Mills. And before I introduce Billy, let's relive the magic from the 1964 games with this intro. Let's do it. 1964. Some of the athletes from various teams have broken ranks to get a closer look. U.S. girls. Yoshinori Sakai is now passing by the bands and through those traditional Japanese drums. Flags of all the nations. Now we're coming to one of the most impressive moments of the Olympics as Sakai will turn and salute the crowd before igniting the call and which will burn throughout the Olympic Games until the closing ceremonies and it will be extinguished. produced an amazing finish by Billy Mills. And here we go in the final lap for the gold medal in the 10,000 meter. And up front is Bill Mills. He's pressing Ron Clark, the world champion. Bill Mills in the United States, number 722, is leading Ron Clark. And in third place right now is Mahut Bakamudi of Tunis. A tremendous upset of Bill Mills can hang on. But Kamudi goes out ahead as Kamudi right now leading in the 10,000 meter. Ron Clark is third. Rather, Bill Mills is in third. Ron Clark is in second right now. This is the final lap for the 10,000 meter. The unheralded Mahout Kamudi of Tunis is putting on a tremendous sprint. He's out ahead of Ron Clark. Bill Mills, the United States, is in third place. And this will certainly be the fastest 10,000 meter ever run by an American. Here's Mills who seems to be boxed in. Suddenly there's an opening and here he comes. Here they come down the final lap. Can Ron Clark catch the Moody? They're going through the field. He's coming up. He's passing the Moody. Look at Bill. Look at Bill. Look at Bill. Coming on. Bill is coming on. Oh. <laughs> it might be Bill Mills. What a tremendous surprise here. Bill Mills in the United States wins the 10,000 meters. Bill Mills in the United States, a tremendous upset. Wins the 10,000 meter here. His unheralded honor from Kansas. Let's go back and look with our other camera to see exactly how he broke through the pack. 
Here they come down the final lap. Can Ron Clark catch the Moody? They're going through the field. He's coming up. He's passing the Moody. Look at Bill. Look at Bill. Look at Bill. Coming on. Bill is coming on. Oh. No. Oh. It might be Bill. <laughs> Tremendous surprise here. Bill Mills of the United States wins the 10,000 meters. Billy Mills, the only American ever to win a gold medal in the Olympic 10,000 meter run. <laughs> Welcome to Native Voice TV. Thank you. My, my pleasure to be here. You know, I, I've seen that clip so many times, and every time I watch it, it gives me chills, like it just did, and I want to start cheering, <laughs> and I usually do, but actually to watch it with him here. That, that's that, crazy. That, like, he was telling me how he got pushed, showing me the, the moment where I got pushed. I got pushed there. Wow. And, and you so won. you overcame. Well, it, it all started when my mom died. And, and my dad simply said, son, you have broken wings. And he said, it takes a dream to heal broken wings. But he died when I was 12. And he said, you look for sports, drama, music, the arts, dance, creative writing, anything constructive and enjoyable. I hope you try sports, son. Then he died when I was 12. And I came so close to suicide in college. Society just broke me, that the racism in society, and I broke. And instead of jumping, I just heard the energy underneath my skin. Wow. Don't. Don't. Like my dad's voice. So junior college, I wrote down a dream to heal a broken soul. Gold medal, 10,000 meter run. And then to orchestrate it, uh, to me, it was a gift. That was. Tell me, when you were in the Olympics, in that race, what were you thinking? Because I've talked with some athletes, triathletes before, and, and they're running the 26 mile marathon and they're going, well, you know, why, why me? They say every step, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? What were you thinking? Well, there, there were several thoughts. What I just described, uh, trying to heal a broken soul. So I truly wrote down the goal, win a gold medal at the 10,000 meter run, Tokyo, Japan, 1964. Not to become an Olympic gold medalist, but truly to heal a broken soul and came so close to suicide. So as the race is underway, the last lap, my, my thoughts there were so powerful. Type two diabetic, hypoglycemic, going low blood sugar. And I start to go low blood sugar. Not knowing if I could stay with the leaders, Clark pushes me into the third lane. Momentarily, I, I quit. I didn't quit the race. I was just going to strike out and hit. Then it was keep the composure. Just stay calm, keep the composure. Then it was just one more try, one more, one more, one more try. And coming off the curve, I think what won for me, I'm in third place trying to get into second, not having the energy. I pass a runner. I glance at him. In the center of his jersey was an eagle. So my thoughts, back to my dad. You do these things, son. Someday you'll have wings of an eagle. Wings of an eagle. I can win. I can win. I may never be this close again. I've got to do it now. Then I won, I won, I won, and the tape breaks across my chest. I came to a stop, and the official came up and said, who are you, who are you? <laughs> I go, oh, my God, did I miscount the laps? Finished, finished. You're the new Olympic champion. And that moment was so powerful then, that moment was a gift. And what do you do with a gift that, of that magnitude? And hearing that, the announcer during the, at the beginning of the race, well, there's Billy Mills, we don't expect, or he's not expected <laughs> to place or something like that. And he's kind of like, hmm. The, the announcer at the end actually was fired, Dick Banks. Uh, his folks helped get Palm Springs started, I believe, in real estate. He was the most informed track and field enthusiast throughout the world. And uh, he was hired for the games. When he lost composure, shouting, here comes Mills, here comes Mills, he won, he won. They fired him and he wasn't paid. Really? And he created that magical moment. Oh, today. That because was... he was excited about you winning? Showing partiality over the air. I see. <laughs> well, you know that moment that we just witnessed in 2000, that was chosen as the greatest Olympic battle of all time. Is that correct? Absolutely. And what, 
what made me feel so so humbled, they excluded drug perform drug performance enhancement events, but all any any track and field event of the 20th century, men, women, any meet, just two men, two women who battled trying to win. And uh, my world record was the 76th greatest battle with Jerry Lindgren, and the 10K was the greatest track and field battle of the 20th century. You still and hold the record, don't you? Well, the, my, my record is the only the only American from the Western Hemisphere right. to ever win that race. Right. But but it's humbling because I didn't try to become an Olympic gold medalist. I wanted to heal a broken soul. And when I probably 55 meters to go, it was I'm going to win, but I may not get to the finish line first. Contradicting myself, it took several months after the games that I would wrestle with that. Why did I say I'm going to win, but I may not get to the finish line first? For me, there are two races. One, trying to heal a broken soul. And in the process, trying to win an Olympic gold medal. And then I was blessed. I was able to get both. I healed the broken soul and became an Olympic gold medalist. And you're in the Olympic Hall of Fame? Uh, I'm in the Olympic Hall of Fame, uh, the USA Track and Field Hall of Fame, American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame. Wow. But I think far more important than the Hall of Fames is that moment was a gift, and, and I wanted to give back. So I tried to orchestrate my journey after the Games by taking culture, tradition, spirituality, extracting out the virtues and the values, and placing those virtues and values into an educational pursuit, into my marriage to be a better man, uh, into my Olympic pursuit, then into my career. Why? It's because it's the virtues and values of any society, positive virtues and values, that will give the young people direction, confidence, clarity of mind to make positive decisions and stay the course. And you work with kids on this, right? Because they're look we have such a high suicide rate with Native kids. Yes, and the fact that I came so close to suicide. And what saved me was what I just described. I took our culture, our tradition, our spirituality, and I extracted out the virtues and the values. And I put those into my daily life for confidence, for direction, for clarity of mind. And the thought of suicide, for some of us, never leaves. But I keep it suppressed, locked up under chains and locks, and uh, long, long throwing the, the key away. And I do it in strange ways of trying to keep focused. Every year, I pick somebody that I met the year before that's empowered me and that's given me the, the, the will, uh, the discipline to do things right in my life, making many mistakes, but more importantly, the will to live, no matter, what, no matter the circumstance, for example. And uh, uh, one of the heroes I picked uh, from California, uh, I, I, I heard about him when I was in California, but I, I read the book about him, Conversations with the Rattlesnake, uh, Theo Fleury, uh, Indian from, Cal from uh, Canada, gold medalist in hockey, Stanley Cup winner. But as a young boy, his coach had raped him repeatedly, just as a young child. And, and then he, he broke, uh, was on the verge of suicide, then decided to live. There was this lady that would follow him, go to all of his games, whether it was Chicago, whether it was in L.A., his hockey games, professional hockey. So he goes back to Canada, and he runs into her and says, why did you show up at all of my games? Uh, well, no matter where I was, you were there. She simply said, Theo, I was there because I'm your grandmother. Oh. And she took him into some traditional ceremonies, and uh, he's on this incredible path to healing. But he will tell you, He's not healed, but he's a thousand percent better than last year. So uh, he, he attempted suicide, uh, but he had the will to live. And with, with Theo, I just believe it was the, the strong virtues and the values that we possess that gave him the, the desire. And so many of our young kids, young children, young adults, they lack that sense of values and, and how our culture 
and can heal us and bring us together. And you, with your organizations, you started the Running Strong um, programs. You work with a lot of kids. Could you talk about your experiences? And well, well one of the one of the uh, well, two beautiful experiences. Uh, we drill water wells, for example, on my reservation, where water has to be trucked in some places twice a week for drink, drinking, bathing, and washing. And there was these two elders. Uh, one was blind. One was hard of hearing. So the blind could hear, the hard of hearing could see. And the truck pulling up the, the rig to drill the well was approaching their property. One could hear, the other could see. So these two elderly people grabbed their hands, started going around in circles, dancing and singing, ring around the circle, I believe. I can't recall the name of that ancient, ancient just the song, the ring around the rosy. Ring around the rosy. And they started drilling the well on their property. And every hour, she would go out and sing an honor song for them. And uh, the man drilling the well said he had never, had never been so touched to having these elderly people so thankful to get their water. But the one I'm involved in currently, the 50th anniversary of me winning the gold medal uh, two years ago, we wanted to celebrate winning the 10K and the 50th anniversary. But I wanted to do it in a manner in which we could reach out to young people. So I have a quality board, quality staff. Uh, they put some thought to it and created the Dream Starters program where for five years, we're given 10, $10,000 grants, 10,000 meter run, five years, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50th anniversary, to a young person, urban area, or on a reservation, that has an idea, a dream, that it can empower their community. They find a nonprofit mentor, they get together, submit a proposal, we choose 10, we invite them back to Washington, D.C. for the Dream Starters Academy, and explain more in depth the process. We give them their $10,000 check, they're our guest, we fly them back, then they start implementing their dream. At the end of the first year of the 10, we'll pick five and give them an additional $5,000 grant. At the end of 10 years, at the end of five years, we pick 10 of the 50 and give them $50,000 grant in case their dream just has the power to eventually create its own legs. And I won't name any of the, the, the 20 now that we have chosen because they're all so special, but, but their dreams are so powerful, uh, oh, sexually exciting. abused, and turning to the culture to create new ways and, uh, of, of understanding the rites of passage into womanhood, the rites mm -hmm. of passage into manhood, uh, to create more dentists, and just on and on and on. But uh, the, the minds of these young people we meet uh, for me, it creates one thing, hope. Hope uh, they're choreographing our future. Wow, that's wonderful. Congratulations on that. That's so needed. It's just, <laughs> it's just so exciting, the things that you have done and the impact you've had on the community. Because I think you're right, a lot of the kids are disconnected from the culture. They don't have that to fall back on. They've either pushed it away or haven't been, if they've been urbanized and have not experienced it for some reason or another. Let, let me share this because I, I truly feel that that moment in time, mm -hmm. winning the Golden Olympic Games was a gift to me. So my wife and I orchestrated how we can have a career and we can give back. So the first giveaway was the movie Running Brave. I wanted to take the inspiration that was given to me and pass it on to other generations. The next giveaway, was the book we wrote with Nicholas Sparks, uh, Lessons of a Lakota. And they all bring tremendous humility to me. Uh, we get a, a letter from a man in Australia. He'd been searching different religions, uh, Buddhism, Christianity. He said, I was in, I'm in there from the outback. And I was in an old used bookstore and Lessons of a Lakota called me. And he, he found happiness within himself. Uh, the other was, of course, then my Running Strong for American Indian Youth program. 
But I want to share this with you, and I want to share it with an audience because it is kind of where, where my passion lies today. And then I think if you develop a passion, you develop the talent to equal the passion. You bring them together, boom, magical things can happen. And one of the magical things I want to happen is to have our country more united, bring the diversity, the beauty of our diversity together. So I started working with young people, making sure they understand the doctrine of discovery. And I'll do it in this manner. 1492, a new world is discovered. So the imperial countries of the world wanted their share of the land. Spain started dividing the Antarctica to the Arctica. They took portions, leaving portions for others. The Pope wrote the doctrine of discovery, which simply says, any new lands that are discovered can only belong to the first Christian monarch that discovers them. Lands that are occupied by pagans. And they must come under an international rule of law. Their laws, their language, their customs, their song, their dance, their music. Nothing applies. And they must be brought to Christianity. But then it was realized if we were brought to Christianity, we could own property. They couldn't take our land. So we had no souls. They justified before landing on the shores legal ownership of our land. Many professors today in some of our major universities will describe it this way to me. Billy, they justified legal theft. Then genocide. 60 to 100 million Indian people, North, Central, and South America before the Europeans arrived. At the end of the wars, 6 million survived. My set of footprints, I'm half Indian, half white, come from the European ancestors and come from the indigenous ancestors, meeting in 1492, instantly beginning to conflict because of the doctrine of discovery. We had no souls, we had no ownership of land, they owned it, and we must submit. Started the westward movement of Indian people. 1823, and I will take the time to name the court case, 1823, the United States Supreme Court adopted the doctrine of discovery as their policy for the treatment of Indian people. So signing of treaties, and the treaties could be broken because this land was a gift to the Europeans from God. Manifest destiny was born. After the treaties were signed and broken, more land was needed to build a dam. We can take more Indian land, flood their burial grounds, their homes, move them to higher ground, build a dam. Executive order. Then statutes. Too much time has gone by. You cannot sue. And that created the Trail of Tears. Your, your mother. That created the, the, the massacre and the hanging and the decapitating of Captain Jack in California. Uh, Sand Creek Massacre. Uh, Wounded Knee Massacre. And also created white privilege. And those of us that exist today, we had no part of that, but we have to, to come together, recognize that white privilege still exists. It created to a great extent the, the, the courts and then the, the legal system that many of our young men of color uh, keeps them suppressed. That's right. And our young people need to know that. Uh, that's the first chapter, the birth of the country. Now the land had to be developed. The second chapter, slavery. We need to know that to come together and choreograph our journey into the horizon of our future and make America even greater. We become a great country. And the reason I'm committed to this, my wife and I travel 108 different countries. We get off of a ship, a plane. I seek out indigenous people or they seek me out. Mm -hmm. And they are asking me, do you know your treaty rights? Are you aware of the doctrine of discovery? Manifest destiny. And it, it's troubling. Why are they learning that? And we're not. They're looking toward indigenous, indigenous women in the United States of America for direction, for confidence, for hope. So I just want to empower Indian and non-Indian people by letting them know where we began and where we are today and what we can truly become. So we need to know our footsteps. Absolutely. That is really 
needed work, needed education for our youth. What always got me is the in 1823 when they started making treaties with the natives, none of the natives had an English or had an alphabet, and they didn't read, they didn't write, and the Cherokees actually were the first tribe to get a, a alphabet, but that wasn't invented until I believe 1840s. But how could they yeah. have you sign a treaty and then mm -hmm. remove you from your land when yeah. you didn't know what it was about? Just put an X yeah. here, huh? Put an X. Uh -huh. You know, there, there are so many repercussions that society doesn't understand from that. For example, let, let me name one. Uh, simply because I'll say the word, simply because I have said the football team in our nation's capital the Washington Redskins does not honor me. I can bring honor to myself, to my tribal nation, to America, and help empower hopefully the world. I've been spit upon and I've been called the N-word five times in the last eight years, simply because I tell why the word Redskin does not honor me. Doctrine of Discovery, Manifest Destiny, Treaty Signed, Treaties Broken, and now we're outside of Denver, the Sand Creek Massacre. The soldiers are coming in, the Indian people are thinking they're bringing maybe some subsistence because the buffalo's gone and they're being rounded up. The soldiers open fire, and I read this in some articles on the, the Smithsonian. The soldiers open fire, and before some of our people were dead. They were scalping them because of the bounty that is being paid back in the fort. Right. And we all know this, that the female scalp got the highest bounty because of the, of the sacredness of reproduction. And the young girl before puberty, her scalp paid the highest bounty. Now let's see if I can get through this because it, 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 it's painful. How did they know it was a female scalp? They scalp the genitalia of our young women, of a young girl before puberty. And as the soldiers rode off, they took the scalp just, and the genitalia just freshly scalped before the blood could dry and put it over the saddle horns in victory and rode off. That's part of our history. I've told to some young gang members, some have said, if it's not too late, they'll try to be the warrior I'm trying to describe instead of continuing with the anger and the lost spirit as a gang member. Uh, some have excused themselves and said, Billy, you know, that, that's, I'm, I'm too far involved. But we need to know that because other countries are learning that part of our history. We need to come together as a, as a nation, as a great nation, and we can. A great nation that I was willing, as an officer in the United States Marine Corps, to give my life so our young people would have opportunities. And uh, it's not late, it's not too late, but that window of opportunity may not stay open forever. Wow, thank you so much. Um, they're giving me the signal here, we have to wrap it up. Thank you for being here. You just glossed over, there's actually a movie on, on yes. his life, and we'll talk about that next time, because you're gonna have to come back again. We have so much more. Uh, things we want to hear about from you, just just a wealth of knowledge. But thank you so much. It's so special to have you here on Native Voice TV. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Oh,